So, we will continue our discussion on micro machining of silicon. In my last lecture, I told you there are two micro machining process, one is bulk micro machining and other is surface micro machining. So, out of those two process today, I will discuss in detail bulk micro machining process for silicon. So, this particular technology, there are various chemical agents we use for bulk micro machining. So, one of such chemical used or agent used for bulk micro machining is ethylene diamine pyrocatechol or in short EDP etching. So, here we use three chemicals, one is ethylene diamine, another is pyrocatechol and the third is water. So, they are mixed in a subtle stoichiometric ratio and then we go for etching silicon at a particular temperature. This particular technology has got certain advantage. One is it is highly selective over materials like silicon dioxide, silicon nitride, chromium and gold. So, all these three materials can be used for masking purpose. That means, it can be protected, this particular layer can be, can be used for protection of silicon where you do not want to etch that material, means silicon material. So, it is a very good masking material. And in this particular technique EDP etching, etch stop technique is very, very simple, it is not that much complicated. So, these are the two basic advantage for EDP etching. So, now some other features are there for EDP etching, those features are mentioned here one by one. Etch rate of the silicon material depends on temperature, composition of etchant and density of atomic bonds on exposed silicon plane. What does it mean by that? Density of atomic bonds on exposed silicon plane means it will depend on crystallographic orientation, because in different crystallographic plane, the atomic density of the silicons are different. That means, the etch rate will be different for one zero zero oriented plane crystal plane in silicon, one 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 and one one zero, the etch rate of these three planes will be different for, uh, for uh, the uh, getting different structure and shape of silicon uh, microstructure. Now, orientation, size and shape of the oxide opening on the wafer surface determine the type of hole form. That I have explained I think in my earlier one view graph that complete structure, edge structure will depend on the shape of the opening on silicon dioxide mask. If you want to membrane or if you want to have the, uh, the V group or want to, want to have the micronozole, so accordingly you have to shape the masking oxide material and silicon will preferential etch in different crystallographic direction. So, as a result of which you will get different kind of shape in the etch group. So, that means your design or mask should be such that, such that at the end of etch process you will get your desired structure out of the silicon. Now, third one is very thin membrane of uniform thickness can be created by forming a heavily boron P plus layer. That means, here the P plus boron layer will act as an H top layer. I will discuss in detail the H top mechanism and H top process, what are the various H top techniques used in micro machining in my next lecture. Now, let us discuss on the, the setup, EDP etching setup. So, in this diagram, you can see the laboratory level EDP etching apparatus, it is not commercial. What we use here, you can see your conical flask is here. So, there we put the etching solution, 
and there is a wafer carrier which is held in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a in a hook here and which is basically the uh, insulating rubber or some uh, 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 polypropylene or some other hard ceramic material there some cork is here. Now, inside that the thermometer is there which can measure the temperature inside the chamber. Now, the wafers are kept like this in this figure it is just uh, vertically you can uh, uh, dip the, the array of the wafers into the solution. Now, there are two other things here you can see in the right side there is an arrangement which is the condenser arrangement and the left side is another arrangement which can give you the liquid nitrogen uh, will be generated here and those nitrogen will be flown into the etching chamber. Now, as I mentioned that the etching of silicon in EDP is dependent on the temperature that means and concentration of the etching solution. So, to ensure that we have to have a heating arrangement. So, the heating arrangement is here in the heater and thermometer can measure the temperature. So, so that you can adjust the temperature by controlling the heater and you can measure the temperature with the thermometer. Now, other thing as I told you just concentration of etching is also important. That means, you have to ensure that concentration of the etching solution will remain constant throughout your etching process. That means, once you make the solution during etching the concentration may degrade of various reason because of the reactions and at the same time since you are doing this etching at a high temperature in the range of that temperature is nearly 100 degree centigrade 100 to 110 degree centigrade. So, there some of the etching solution will evaporate and if the etching solution evaporate then automatically concentration will increase. So, the evaporation has to be stopped. So, for that reason in condenser arrangement has been made here. So, whatever the etching solution will evaporate it will because this side is closed top and the, the only path is through this and when you will the vapor of the EDP solution when you will passes through that is a cold water circulation around that tube. So, again it will condense and it will come back to its original uh, uh, um, conical container. Okay. So, the evaporated EDP solution it goes through there again it condense and it will come back to its original location. So, that in that way we can prevent this uh, uh, going out of the EDP etching solution at after evaporation at higher temperature and so that the concentration of the etching solution will be will remain constant. And another arrangement here this uh, liquid nitrogen evaporator has been used here. The reason is that this particular etching is highly sensitive to the environment. That means, environment means if the etching the solution is done is open atmosphere. So, there it will have lot of oxygen also along with nitrogen. So, if oxygen is there, so this oxygen gas will oxidize the etching solution as a result of which the etch rate will vary. In order, in order to prevent the oxidation what we have to do the complete etching process should be done etching will, should be done in nitrogen environment. So, above the etching solution the space has to be filled by nitrogen. For that the easiest take there are two techniques either you connect a gas cylinder nitrogen gas cylinder and, and you can pass nitrogen through that. So, that may be little bit expensive. So, on easier technique we adopted in our laboratory that is a liquid nitrogen bath. So, liquid nitrogen is very uh, cheap and easily available in our institute there is no problem. So, here what we have done a hollow the insulated thermocol chamber there we put liquid nitrogen and then what has been done a metal cover this is basically a cylindrical funnel. So, cylindrical funnel is inserted and this portion is metallic 
So, what will happen at room temperature? So, this, this uh, metallic means highly conducting. So, that means the room temperature, liquid nitrogen temperature is very low, you know. So, and outside is the room temperature. So, because of the temperature difference, the heat will be conducted from through the, uh, the hollow metallic cylinder into the liquid nitrogen as a result of which the liquid nitrogen will evaporate. So, that liquid nitrogen through this cylindrical space, it will flow into that through this path into the this etching chamber. We do not need the high pressure nitrogen inside the chamber, just the environment inside the etching chamber should be nitrogen. So, that is why this is the a very simple technique and using that if you uh, if you do go for etching for long time your the consumption of the liquid nitrogen is not that much. So, the nitrogen will flow slowly into the chamber. So, as a result of which inside the chamber it will be in, in nitrogen ambient and temperature is controlled here, condensation you are preventing here. So, this is the complete the setup is a laboratory scale setup and you can go for EDP etching. Now, what are the compositions of EDP etching? So, the compositions of the EDP solution is given here, 50 mole percent water, 40 mole percent ethylene diamine and 4 mole percent pyrocatechol. So, if you calculate from this from their formulae, then you will get the 387 cc of the, the ethylene diamine which is liquid, 55 gram of pyrocatechol which is solid and 112 cc of water is mixed and this pyrocatechol is dissolved into the solution and that is the EDP etching solution. And H temperature we used normally use here in 100 degree centigrade, H environment is nitrogen, H rate of 100 silicon plane is found to be 25 micrometer per hour, okay, that is the, the H, H rate there. Now, Another technique is KOH, potassium hydroxide silicon HN, but EDP although it is a very uh, uh, simple process, although is a masking of silicon is very simple in EDP etching, but there are certain problem. What are that problem? Problem is this etching solution is highly toxic. So, you have to have very good exhaust system into the uh, into the uh, etching etching room as well as uh, as well as uh, the uh, complete etching apparatus what are the vapor comes it has to be exhausted properly otherwise it will be health hazardous that means this particular solution you have to have certain specific arrangement for etching for prevention of your health protection of your health that is why many laboratories they do not like EDP etching. They go for very simple user friendly etching solution which is KOH, potassium hydroxide. It is a very well known solution and is not expensive also. And potassium hydroxide is highly popular as silicon anisotropic etching in micro machining of silicon. So, here the advantage of KOH is it is easy to handle. With KOH you can get a smooth edge profile, but it attack aluminum metal. So, aluminum metal or in some cases gold metal also cannot be used for passivation. In EDP you can use chromium gold, but not aluminum. Aluminum passivation is not allowed either EDP or KOH. Next is much higher 100 to 111H rate ratio, that means anisotropy is very high. 100 to 11 the H rate ratio is large compared to EDP. Silicon dioxide H rate in KOH is higher than EDP, that is one advantage. KOH is much useful to H deep trenches in 110 silicon. If you want to have deep trench, so you need a etching solution whose H rate is relatively high. So, that advantage is there in KOH. Now, Normally, the KOH concentration is used 10 to 50 percent of KOH solution is used for the uh, micro machining of silicon. In KOH, we sometimes add some, some organic chemical which is isopropyl alcohol and that isopropyl alcohol will help you 
getting more selectivity. This particular solution will improve selectivity means selectivity with respect to what with respect to passivation layer means masking layer and silicon and at the same time selectivity is that is you can say an isotropy between different crystallographic plane. So, particularly for that reason a small amount of isopropyl alcohol is sometimes added into the KOH solution. KOH H selectivity of 110 over 111 crystal plane is much higher of the order of 500 than that of EDP. As H selectivity of a silicon dioxide is less than 500 at various concentrations of KOH, silicon dioxide H mask is not adequate for long aging. Okay. Here the silicon dioxide if he, he will not protect the layer ideally if you go for long etching for example, if you go for 4 inch wafer complete etching which is thickness, whose thickness is nearly 400, 500 micrometer, then silicon dioxide will be attacked by the cavage also. Okay. But for say uh, 1 micron, 2 micron or even say 10 micron, 15 micron, 20 micron etching it will not create any problem. In that case, another passivation layer is prescribed for KOH micromachining that is silicon nitride. Silicon nitride is an effective, effective masking film for KOH etching. Okay. Now, other than those KOH and EDB, some other alkaline solutions may be used for silicon. They are namely sodium hydroxide NH4OH sorry sodium hydroxide NaOH, ammonium hydroxide is NH4OH, hydrazine N2H4H2O. But this alkaline solution are not very much popular because these alkaline etchants affects metal interconnection, interconnection lines. Not only then out of this the hydrazine is extremely health hazardous chemical. So, that is People, uh, people try to avoid this chemical. That is why this ammonia is also not user friendly chemical. So, because of the hazardous nature of these chemicals, people do not use these chemicals for silicon etching. EDP does not attack gold, but it does attack aluminum as I mentioned. So, gold or chromium gold can be used as masking layer in case of EDP. So, another promising silicon micromachining etching solution is TMAH, tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide. It does not attack aluminum and is a promising silicon etchant with aluminum masking layer. So, we will discuss little bit on TMH solution now. So, TMH has come into the micromachining process late than KOH and EDP. The TMH basically is an organic etching solution and this particular etchant has one biggest advantage is that it does not attack aluminum. That means, after complete metallization of the silicon wafer that means, interconnect lines has been patterned then you go for micro machining. So, the aluminum fine lines which are used for interconnection will never be attacked or never be disturbed. Because of that reason we say that TMH is CMOS compatible micromachining HN solution. Many cases nowadays as I mentioned earlier also that the sensor and the signal conditioning circuit are fabricated side by side side by side and they are integrated together. In that case, you can fabricate the CMOS signal conditioning circuit, then sensor definition and then at the end you can go for the micro machining or etching of silicon. In that case, you have to protect the, uh, the CMOS tip interconnect metallization lines. So, people were looking for a long time for a particular etching solution which can be used in presence of aluminum. 
which will not attack aluminum. Ultimately, they found that TMH is a very good uh, uh, H and alternative, which is highly CMOS uh, compatible. And this is gaining considerable interest because of that, because of its excellent silicon H rate, edge selectivity to masking layer, even with aluminum film, degree of anisotropy and relatively low toxicity. Because it is a organic chemical H N, so it is not toxic also, that is another advantage. So, we always try to avoid the toxic H N because of the health point of view. Now, the characteristics of TMH etching are as follows. Influence of TMH concentration is there on etching process. Quality of silicon edge surface has to be studied, because if you go for the VLSI realization along with the uh, uh, sensor realization. So, silicon edge surface should be quality should be extremely good smooth surface you have to get for various reasons. Selectivity to aluminum, lower 100 to 111 H rate ratio, anisotropy H n for silicon, anisotropy H n means it is you will have uh, selectivity over the different crystallographic planes, low toxicity, highly selective to oxide and nitride compared to KOH. The selectivity to oxide and nitride is more in TMH compared to KOH. So, that means you can go for either oxide masking or nitride masking or aluminum masking or gold masking. You have lot of freedom if you use TMH, but the total standardization technique of the TMH etching in silicon is not very simple, is not that much easy. Okay. Now, there are some features of TMH you have to do in the lab some experiment to improve the selectivity as well as more H rate as well as surface finish of the edge surface should be very good. For that we did lot of experiments in our laboratory and some of the results will be shown now. We have seen the surface roughness increases with the decrease of TMH concentration. Here is a plot of H rate versus TMH concentration. You can see over one typical thing over different temperature we did it 70 degree, 80 degree and 90 degree Celsius. We found that if TMH concentration increases the H rate falls. That means, at low concentration TMH the H rate is higher okay, which is normally not true in, in many of the H N solution. But at the same time if you decrease the, the TMH concentration surface roughness increases. So, if you need high H rate ratio as well as good surface, then we have to go for certain extra technique, we have to adopt extra technique, extra mechanism. What is that? We use here silicic acid and ammonium part sulphate as a dopant into the TMA solution. Basically, silicic acid ammonium part sulphate has got different, different uh, uh, purpose or different action on total TMH etching process. What are those? First, let us talk about silicic acid. Silicic acid material is highly helpful for aluminum passivation. It helps in formation of aluminum silicate on the exposed aluminum layer. <coughs> Although TMH has got the property of not attacking aluminum, but even then if you want ideal masking property, the aluminum should not be attacked at all, then you add little bit silicic acid. So, that silicic acid with that TMH it will form uh, with aluminum it will form aluminum silicate and a thin layer of aluminum silicate over the exposed aluminum layer will help further passivation or masking properties of this particular layer, uh, but it has got certain limitation. Silicon H rate falls due to lowering of pH of the dope solution. If you add silicic acid, then H rate will be little bit at a downward train, because the adding silicic acid will lower the pH value of the TMH solution. That is one of the thing we have to adjust by proper mixing of 
silicic acid. You cannot use silicic acid as, as much as possible for get 100 percent selectivity over aluminum, some compromise you have to do. Now, the role of ammonium persulfate, that particular chemical increases silicon H rate and surface smoothness. Okay? If you add silicic acid, it decreases the H rate, but in the addition, if you add the ammonium persulfate, it will, it will uh, improve again H rate okay? at the same time surface smoothness h surface smoothness is also an important criteria I told you. So, that will be that you will get it by adding small amount of ammonium persulfate. And this ammonium persulfate is basically an oxidizing agent that eliminates hillock formation on silicon surface, because surface smoothness will be disturbed if there are certain hillocks on the surface of the silicon. And that hillock formation will be prevented by ammonium par sulfate because it is an oxidizing agent. That means, we found in TMH, if we add judiciously silicic acid and ammonium par sulfate with proper stoichiometric ratio, then at the same time we can achieve different objective. Number one, H rate will be increased. Number two, the surface smoothness will be improved and number three, Number three, what we can get that uh, the H rate, surface smoothness and aluminum passivation. All the three things can be achieved by judicious selection of the, the uh, uh, silicic acid and the ammonium per sulphate. Some of the experimental studies is shown here in this plot, you can see here. The dissolved ammonium per sulphate silicon H rate, here the micron per minute. So, ammonium per sulphate gram per liter with 5 percent TMH, because as I shown you, if TMH concentration increases, the H rate also falls. So, that is why we, con we confined 5 percent TMH etching solution. Silicic acid we added 38 gram per liter at 80 degree Celsius. Then, if we go on adding ammonium per sulphate in this ratio 2 gram per liter, 4, 6, 8 like that, silicon H rate is like that. So, that means here the with addition of more AP, the silicon H rate also increases. On the other hand, the aluminum H rate you can see dissolved silicic acid. As I told you, the silicic acid will form an aluminum silicate film on the bare aluminum and it will prevent etching of aluminum into the TMA solution. So, how much silicic acid is to be added that will depend from this characterization curve. You see, aluminum H rate goes down drastically if you go on dissolving silicic acid. Okay. So, here also 5 percent TMH etching is sol uh, solution is used and A p is used 7 nearly here in this region middle of that from 7 gram per liter ammonium per sulphate. Then this uh, the uh, silicic acid uh, addition of silicic acid you go on changing according the aluminum H rate will fall. Aluminum H rate will fall is desired thing that means, it is not attacking aluminum at all you will get perfect passivation layer. So, now some picture SCM photomicrographs are shown here. The surface roughness increases with the decrease of TMH concentration. In a, you see, uh, here again, as I told you, the etching of H rate will be higher at lower TMH concentration that we have seen in the curve. So, when the H rate will be higher, then the problem will be the surface roughness also appear because H rate is very fast. And this picture shows 5 percent TMH. And you can see lot of the hillocks and this black portion are basically the uh, groups. That is why it is a black. So, these are the islands. So, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the silicon, at, uh, silicon atoms are, are dispersed into in different direction and these are the blank portion and as a result of which surface roughness will, will deteriorate here. But as a, in on other case you can see here 10 percent TME solution those the black regions are missing here. That means, here surface smoothness is good in this particular picture. Okay. Now, here is again uh, the silicon micro roughness study has been made in this in this diagram as well, as well as the masking property of silicon dioxide is also shown in this diagram. You can see if you go higher and higher temperature etching, then silicon dioxide H rate 
will be more and more. That means, silicon dioxide H H more and more means the silicon will not be a good masking layer, it should not etch at all. So, high temperature etching may create problem if you go for silicon dioxide masking layer, but here although that is micron per hour unit, it is angstrom per hour. So, although the silicon dioxide etch rate increases with temperature, but at a small rate. Now, in the, this diagram, you see roughness of the edge silicon surface in kilo angstrom and here is TMH concentration. So, here you see lower concentration of TMH, the higher edge rate and surface roughness also is higher, because roughness of the edge silicon kilo angstrom means the top uh, ups and bottoms are there in roughness. So, that is the, in this range. So, in kilo angstrom unit. So, that is very large at lower TMH concentration and low at <coughs> higher TMH concentration. That means, using those characteristics curves with temperature, with TMH concentration, with silicic acid and with ammonium persulfate, a good study has to be made in any lab to get a perfect etching solution, which will satisfy all the criteria. Okay. Now, here is again some photomicrograph study. You can see SCM of S surface of silicon with addition of ammonium per sulphate. One is 1 gram per liter is a 5 gram per liter. 1 gram per liter surface roughness is more because you, you can see here the lot of black spaces means lot of holes are created, but here it is not that much because you see the holes are less in this particular picture. Okay, black lesions are less. Now, the aluminum masking property one photograph has been taken using the uh, scanning electro micros microscopy and here you can see the aluminum line in this particular picture has not attacked at all and the black regions are silicon and the colored this line say aluminum line. Say uh, 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 this shows that this particular uh, etching has been done with 5 weight percent TMH. 50 gram per liter of silicic acid to passivate exposed aluminum and 100 H rate was 2.5 micron per hour at 85 degree centigrade. That is one photograph taken in our laboratory after uh, etching silicon using aluminum as a masking layer. Now, this particular table shows the anisotropic etching characteristics. Okay. Here, we discussed on KOH H2O, KOH EDP, hydrazine and ammonium hydroxide. The temperature used is here 80 degrees, 75, 110 degree, 118 degree and 75 degree Celsius and 100110 and 111. These three surface H rates are very important and the H rate in micron per hour is mentioned here. You can see 100 silicon in KOH water 84 micron per hour, only KOH if you use 25 to 42, EDP is 51 and hydrogen is highest, even then it is not used because as I told you is a not user friendly chemical, is extremely health hazardous chemical. Now, you can see here the EDP is 100 to 110, the H are almost similar. So, so that 110 and 100 uh, that that selectivity is not there in case of EDP, but 111 and 100 you can see a high selectivity 51 micron per hour here is 1.25 micron per hour. On the other hand here in KOH also it is in the range of 25 to 42 and 11 is 0.5 micron per hour, but if you go for the high selectivity of 100 and 110 then you have to have dilute KOH solution, KOH plus H2O, which will give you 84 and 126, 100 and 110, depending on your application, depending your uh, the etching uh, structure, you have to choose which solution you are going to use for your desired uh, microstructure. Now, another technology I will discuss today that is a LIGA micromachining technique. LIGA is again bulk micromachining, it is not conventional etching technique which is used in EDP, KOH or TMH. 
is a altogether complete different technique for making microstructure. In this particular LIGA process, you can get very high aspect ratio three dimensional structure. Basically, many of the mechanical structure which are used in watch is now being made with the help of LIGA micromachining process. The complete name of the LIGA is lithography, galvanoformung and abformung. The, these are German word and its English <coughs> equivalent is lith lithography is lithography, galvanoformung is electroplating and abformung is a molding. So, L I G A basically lithography, electroplating and molding. Let us discuss now how this particular in this particular technique we get the exact 3 D structure with high aspect ratio. Now, it has got certain advantage over other techniques. What are those? Ability to create 3 D structures as thick as bulk micro machine devices while remaining the same degree of design freedom as surface micro machine. Design freedom of circle micro machining and edge depth is similar to bulk micro machining you get it. Microstructures with feature sizes of several microns have been made with a thickness in excess of 300 micron with the LIGA process. More than 300 micro thickness is easily obtained by the LIGA technique. Now, let us see the process steps of LIGA micro machining technique. First, we take a substrate, is the bottom one is a substrate and on the substrate you coat a conductive, electrically conductive layer. That means, some metal plating has to be done in the bottom. After that, you coat photoresist and that photoresist thickness is 300 to 500 micrometer. That means, one important point I would again mention that not on bare silicon, not on bare ceramic insulator material, you cannot coat this PMAA photoresist. And first, your substrate has to be coated with conductive layer, because in the next stage you are going to form an electroplating. So, electroplating means some cathode anode will be there. So, until unless you, 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 you coat in conducting layer, you cannot use as either cathode or anode. So, whatever the substrate is used, either silicon or ceramic or other material, first you coat with some conducting, electrically conducting layer, then you deposit the thick photoresist. Normal photoresist which we use for uh, VLSI process, those photoresist cannot be used in LIGA process. Here, you need photo is thickness of the order of 300 to 500 micrometer. So, that means, you need a very high viscous photoresist and PMMA polymethyl methacrylate is one such resist, SU8 is another resist which is used for LIGA process. So, that photoresist will give you a thick layer of the film after, after spinning and drying. Okay. So, now, the PMMA of thickness greater than sometimes 500 micrometer on this conductive layer coated substrate is made. Then the step 2, what is the step 2? This is the mask, you can see the green, the green color is the mask and then you have to expose. Through the mask, you have to radiate the PMMA with X-ray radiation. Normal UV lithography cannot be done here, you need here X-ray lithography. So, X-rays are collimated and it will penetrate to the thick resist in well defined side wall, this is the mask. So, through that mask X-ray passes, because here the thickness of the photo is 500 micrometer. So, here this 500 micrometer thick photo resist should be reacted with the radiation. So, for that you need X radiation, so that X radiation will penetrate through that thick layer and complete reaction will take place, that means polymerization will take place. Okay. So, that is the X radiation you expose it, then here the, is a much contrast red color, means through that, that X ray penetrate into the layer 
and then it reacted here and as a result of which it will be polymerized. Okay. Now, step 3, here you have to develop, after exposing next step is develop. So, you develop the desire, develop the photoresist after exposing, then during development as you have seen in case, in case of negative photoresist, so uh, or positive photoresist there whatever you, uh, it is some kind of positive photoresist nature. So, where you expose those portion will be dissolved. So, here also this portion where exposed by X-ray radiation has been dissolved by developer solution of the PMMA. So, that means here hole has been formed. Okay. Step 4, step 4 is what? Metal electroplated on the exposed conductive substrate surface. So, metal is electroplated. So, after that the bottom is a conductive layer you go for electroplating. What electroplating? Which metal you want to fill this group, this, uh, this thick, thick developed structure. So, go for electroplating. So, electroplating will help you depositing that particular metallic film into the groups as higher thickness as you wish. Okay. Okay. So, long time electroplating you do it. So, there you can increase the uh, the, uh, the H rate, uh, you can adjust the electroplating process by the what are the, the, uh, the, uh, the variate variants. One is the concentration of this electroplating solution, another is the temperature, and another is the current. The current through that uh, electroplating is basically electrolysis process. So, if you change the current. So, uh, the rate of deposition will also change. So, by adjusting those parameters, you can get the, the thick layer. So, after that then step 5. So, in step 5 what you are doing? So, the photoresist is removed. You see photoresist has been removed and then only the metallic structure is there uh, which is which is basically fixed on this bottom metal plate. So, now here the sacrificial techniques are combined with the basic Liga process to create partially freed fixture, suspended structures or completely freed devices. Okay. Now, this can be used as a mold. This is one mechanical structure that easily can be made. You see here thickness is, is, is a large and this is hinges can be very small. That means, aspect ratio is very large. So, that can be made using the Liga process. Here you do not need that mask aligning, you do not need the conventional uh, the uh, 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 machine which is used is normal lithography process, but here some important feature which are different from normal lithography techniques are first is the X radiation you need it, second is electroplating you need it, third is a different kind of photoresist you need it those are the different from the normal the lithography and etching process. Now, as I mentioned process requirements are X-ray lithography and thick photoresist PMMA or SU8 that is one of the requirement. Second is electroplating with precious controls on current density because the deposition of the metal on the base plate depends on the current density, temperature, concentration of the electrolyte solution composition of the plating solution to avoid hydrogen bubbles, which may result fatal defects. So, here all the, the temperature concentration composition will decide whether hydrogen bubbles are coming from the deposition process. If hydrogen bubbles are coming more, then automatically they will create some holes and that will form a defect into the your mold. So, the rigidity of the mold will be less. Okay, and it will be porous, the total mold which you got it, is not it. So, that is why you have to control or standardize the complete electroplating process by adjusting temperature, by adjusting current density, concentration and composition of the plating solution. Now, just uh, in a cyclic way, how do we proceed that is shown again, the lithography galvanoforming and upforming. So, it is a cast PMA on metal base, then coming here X radiation, then after that develop the PMA solution, 
after developing you get the holes, then you come here, then here is the electroplate through PMMA and after electroplating you this photoresist is completely removed, dissolved, then you will get this structure, separate metal from PMMA. Okay. This is the, the Liga micro machining process which is used nowadays for making mechanical structure mostly metallic structure. You cannot get ceramic structure out of that because you see electroplating only for metal deposition. If you want to have then you have to go for this Liga process. Now another technique I will discuss today, so that is the laser micro machining. So, we initially discussed on the conventional chemical etching process, silicon etching process that is KOH or TMH or EDP or some other solution hydrogen or other materials. Then we went for different in total different technique that is the LIGA, LIGA method and now I will discuss on laser micro machining. Nowadays, people are in some cases they are using the laser micro machining. So, laser micro machining means here you have to have high concentrated high power laser and laser basically the laser ray if is incident some on some structure some micro explosion will take place and a result of which that will evaporate or that will be uh, ejected from the basic basic material. So, a laser drill is available and that laser can be used for getting a mechanical structure. Here one of the advantage of the laser micro machining obviously, this particular micro machining will not, will not uh, I, I should say uh, uh, H a simple class of a single class of material like in earlier we see silicon in KOH or TMH only silicon, ceramic cannot be done. For example, in electroplating we micro machine structure again only metal, ceramic or semiconductor cannot be done, but if you use laser then semiconductor can be done, metal can be done, ceramic can be done irrespective of the material because it is a mechanical process, mechanical machining process it will not obviously, uh, it will uh, just, uh, just uh, the etching rate or removal rate of the material will be different for ceramic or metal or the semiconductor, but any of the ki any kind of the those materials you can easily make using the laser micro machining process. But here another point you cannot get the edge selectivity kind of thing, you do not need any masking layer also because the laser <laughs> material when it is a hitting a material that will be <laughs> that will be removed. So, that means there is no question of masking, there is no question of uh, the, uh, the mask aligner, there is no question of developing. So, all these things are <laughs> not there. So, basically this is useful only for materials which are which are which cannot be micro machining using the conventional techniques popular techniques the laser micro machining. Obviously, here one advantage one disadvantage is there very small microstructure of uh, say small dimension cannot be made using laser micro machining. Why? Because there you need the laser beams to be focused to a singular point of diameter maybe sometimes less than uh, of the order of micrometer. Okay. If you cannot focus there, so automatically you cannot it is still there you cannot get very fine line. So, those problems are there even nowadays in some cases people are people use these laser micro machining technique. Here basically the process is laser ablation using high power laser pulses of short wavelength or nanosecond pulsed gas laser at 157 to 353 nanometer or femtosecond solid state laser at 266 to 1060 nanometer that is the, the wavelength of the laser normally used in case of laser micro machining technique. No lithography, CNC programmed micro machining that is basically the structure here, CNC programmed machine is available in mechanical laboratory. 
mechanical machining laboratory, the CNC machines are available all. So, is a computer program control the CNC machine which are used for cutting metal cutting and structure making the same machine program uh, uh, machine is used for micro machining for guiding the laser laser beam. Okay. Not governed by crystallographic orientation I discuss it is not governed by crystallographic orientation suitable for silicon and non silicon materials another point to note it is suitable for silicon and non silicon both materials. Ultra short laser pulses produce micro explosions which causes ejection of solid and gaseous particles without significant thermal degradation. So, that is the basic principle or basic thing based on which the materials are ejected. So, this VGAP I am showing you some of the structure which has been made using the laser micro machining they call it as laser liga. So, KRF laser has been used here and the structure is nickel motor turbine. So, miniature micro motor and which is structured from nickel that has been a, a made using this laser micro machining technique and uh, this picture has been taken from this particular paper reference and you can see here the structure is not extremely small here the size of this 375 micrometer may be the group, but total structure in the range of the is a few hundred micrometer to millimeter range. So, that is made using the laser liga process. Okay. So, now the basic bulk micro machining processes I discussed now today uh, that those are normal chemical anisotropic HN solutions and then liga and then laser micro machining. So, we compare the advantage disadvantage of the various anisotropic silicon agents and as well as now you can just differentiate the liga process as well as the laser micro machining process what to be used or what that you have to you have to select depending on your requirement. Out of all these techniques I should now conclude with that that KMH is the best choice of laser uh, best choice of micro machining technique so far as the integrated micro sensor fabrication is concerned and it is the basically the organic etching solution which will not at all toxic which is not health hazardous and biggest advantage is that it is done in laboratory in normal env normal envi environment and biggest advantage is aluminum passivation okay so with this i will just stop today and the next class we will continue on micro machining particularly the surface micro machining technique we will discuss and then we will go for the edge stop techniques which is also another important aspect for micro machining to get different structures so thank you very much Today, we will discuss on edge stop techniques and microstructure fabrication. Edge stop is a very important aspect in making microstructure. I have told you earlier that in MEMS, in many cases, we need membranes and flexures or cantilevers of certain thickness, and that thickness varies in case of surface mi micro machining, maybe. 2 micron, 3 micron in case of bulk micro machining sometimes we need membrane of 10 micron, 20 micron or 30 micron and those, those 10, 20 or 30 micron is coming from the bulk thickness of the wafer which is nearly 300 to 500 micrometer depending on the wafer size. If it is a 2 inch diameter wafer the thickness is nearly 280 to 300 micrometer, if it is a 4 inch diameter wafer 
the thickness of the wave file is nearly 500 micrometer, if it is a 6 inch or 8 inch, then it is further you, you will get uh, more thickness of the silicon wave file. So, from that thickness it has to come down to 10, 20 or 30 micrometer. So, somewhere the you have to stop the etching process. Then there are two ways, one is a mechanical process that means uh, the you observe the time, if you know the etch rate of that uh, film, basically silicon here, if you know the etch rate of silicon in that particular etching solution, then you can note down time, how much time you will etch, then after that you take out the wafer and then you measure the thickness, you can get it. The other way is automatic stopping. So, you see automatic means uh, it, it, it will continue etching, but after, after a certain point, that point has, be, has to be decided by uh, electronically or electrically, okay. So, now you go for printing, just like your uh, stamp, you use it, you printing here and this is the gold coated, this is substrate is the gold coated. Now, if you print here, that fuel or fuel ether ring will make some passivation layer, mono layer and after that, go for weight etching. This particular portion will be stopped and here etching will be done. That is basically micro contact print with no lithography, no exposure, no machine, nothing required. Very simple technique, is not it? Is it not at all the high expenditure equipment required, nothing required. So, next is some issues, I will just, these are known as soft lithography. The a novel first developing soft lithography technique invented by these people, this is MPL or stamp pen repeat process. Stamp polydimethyl siloxan PDMS elastomer, that is a stamp material. First stamp material has been formed, then you are going to use the ink, mostly use long, long chain al alkani fuels 18 to 20 methyl groups, soaking in ethanolic solution, drying and contracting, that is the ink. Printing self assembly monolayer SAM on gold, silver, copper, palladium protecting against etching, what I just showed you. So, that technique is, is getting importance nowadays who does not have lot of money, lot of capital uh, equipment is not required. So, easy technique you can get some, some microfabrication using these two methods. So, let me stop here today, we will continue in the next class on the micro machining, surface micro machining basically. Thank you very much. Thank you.